fly here today for you. This is called a black turkey. I had a follower reach out to me a while back about folding turkey to make wings. And when I inquired in terms of the particular fly that he was talking about, if he had an example, he gave me a link to a page that has this fly by a gentleman by the name of Ralph Hoffman, if I remember correctly. Anyway, when I saw it, I, my hunch was correct in terms of what he was talking about, a folded turkey uh, or folded material for the wing. A lot of your wet flies like this normally have two slips of material, duck or goose, turkey, something like that, that are put together to make the wing. This one, on the other hand, takes a slip of turkey like this and essentially folds it. You kind of wrap it around and fold it. I don't know that I can do this here this way, but you fold it so it's, it's more like this and that's the wing. So there are some tricks to this um, that make it a little bit easier and a little bit more durable but otherwise it's a pretty straightforward fly. It's very similar to a lead wing coachman, and, uh, but it has the folded uh, turkey for the wing. So that's the black turkey and I'll go ahead and get started. Again, the black turkey by placing my hook in the vise. This is a Fullings Mill FM 15 size 12 hook. I'm going to go ahead and debarb this. Then I'll attach my thread. Thread I'm using a Uni 80 in black. Want to attach my thread about an eye length behind the eye of the hook and then advance down the hook shank about another eye length to secure it. At this stage I'm going to tie in my tag. The tag is a gold tinsel. I'm using a Danville size 14 silver and gold mylar tinsel. I'm going to bring the tinsel underneath the thread here with the silver side up and then I'm just going to pull the thread to my left just to bring this tip into the body and secure it. Then I can advance down the hook shank to the point of the hook. Once I'm at the point of the hook, I'm going to turn the hook over and I'm going to wrap my tag in. Four wraps down touching or just slightly overlapping, and then four wraps back up. I'll secure the tag in and then trim away the excess. With my thread still at the point of the hook, I'm now going to tie in my tail. For the tail and the hackle, I'm using a black hen. This is just a regular old black hen hackle. I'm going to take some of the long fibers from one of the feathers, strip them off, and tie these in. I want the fibers to be about a shank length past the tie-in point. I'm going to secure those in and wrapping down the shank a little bit more. And now I'm going to tie in my body material. The body for this is I'm using just some peacock hurl. This is a strong hurl. There is no wire on the black turkey, but if you wanted to, you certainly could put a wire in 
and uh, counter wrap that for reinforcement. I'm going to take the and even the butt ends up and clip off the little white curlies on the end. And when I tie these in, I want the butt ends to extend the length of the body. Notice I'm still wrapping down the hook shank a little bit towards the bend. This will leave my thread generally right between the point of the hook and the barb of the hook. If it's back a little bit further or not back that far, that's fine. What that does for me is it puts the back of the body in the right position for the overall proportion of the fly. And it also makes certain that the hurl will cover up any thread wraps that might have gotten up in there tying in the tail and or the uh, mylar. Now advance my thread up the hook shank. Not going to worry too much about catching every little fiber or, or minimizing every little bump because the peacock hurl is going to do that for me. So this right here, I might have gone back and lashed down. But right now, just a little trim and it's fine. Take my peacock hurl and start palmering this around. Want to get this all nice wraps, kind of compact right next to each other, or possibly that one last hurl might wrap over the previous ones a little bit as you advance forward. That's okay. Just keep them all nice and tight and uniform. Once you're at about an eye length behind the eye of the hook. Just secure those and trim away the excess. Sometimes you end up with kind of a football shaped body. Sometimes it's, it's more uniform. I think these ones tapered down to a tapered tip a little bit sooner, a little bit shorter, but that's all right. Now we're ready to tie in our wing. I'm going to tidy this up just a little bit more. You want to make certain that you have a nice, fairly even, smooth platform for tying in your materials. For the wing on this, we're going to be using turkey feather. This is just a turkey tail feather. This is why this is the part of this fly that uh, I was requested to tie this fly, or at least to demo, so that uh, people could learn how you roll this on to basically make a wing. Your ducks and geese and, and things like that are generally two slips of part of a flight feather that are put together like this to make that wing. Whereas in this case, what you're doing is you're taking a turkey slip which is just a, uh, a segment of the turkey tail. This is called a slip right here. And you are rolling it. Actually, here I have a better one to show you. So you're gonna take this and place it on top and then your index and thumb are going to kind of roll it together. So it's in kind of a semicircle and then you'll tie that in and that's your wing right there. Not all of it, but that's the concept. Problem is, is that the turkey barbs in the tail, they're pretty fragile. They will tend to split up on you, even when you're tying them in, let alone when you're fishing it. You can reinforce that by taking a little bit of head cement and just lightly put some head cement on there and then kind of stroke that head cement out the length of the fibers so that it just soaks in a little bit and it dries and it holds it together. If you put too much on, be careful because what you'll end up with is just kind of a white crusty little area where there's just too much head cement and there's really nothing you can do to, you know, to, in terms of removing that. So practice a little bit. You can experiment with the inside, I should say the outside of the feather right here, the shorter fibers that you may not use for anything. Um, it's up to you. 
But the idea is that you're going to cut a slip out here of the feather, and it's going to be about the width of the gap of the hook. So that one is just about right. I might be one, one fiber long, one barb long. So I'm going to strip one barb out of here. You just put your bodkin in and just select one and just strip that out. I don't need all of this slip for my tail. What I'm looking for is the tip of it is going to be about a halfway down the, the tail. I should say I don't need all of this for the wing. I want the tip of the wing to be about halfway down the tail. I want to have some extra here to hold on to when I go to tie this in and I can cut that off. So not quite halfway down, what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim this to a point. You could, if you want to, try and trim this in more of a rounded shape. That's up to you. I find just having a little point like this works just fine. You can finesse that a little bit to try and make certain that they are even on both sides um, if you want to. The idea is that you're going to hold this right up on top of the fly like this with the tip just about halfway down the tail. Push down and roll that with your index finger and your thumb and then pinch wrap a loop in there, put in a couple more to secure it and then take a look at it. Often what will happen is what you see here, I have more of the fibers on this side, my side of the fly, than on the other side, and therefore it's not folded right down the middle and it's off to one side. Not a problem. If I had put a lot of wraps in there or really tugged on it, I might have damaged it, and I, it would be harder for me to do this. But all I have to do is unwrap it, get it nice and smooth, come up here and wrap it in again. Take your time with it. Wrap that in and check your position. Now this time it's not bad. Tail's a little bit long. Yeah, that tail is just a, a little bit long, but I tell you what, I'm gonna go with it just because the primary purpose was to show how it just kind of rolls over and you get it nice and even, and it's nice and even all around. Put in a few more wraps to secure that and then I will trim away the excess. Bringing my thread up behind the eye of the hook, I'll work backwards, securing the butt ends down, and then having a nice platform for the hackle. Once again, the hackle for this is a uh, black hen hackle and I've selected one where the fibers that I'm looking for the longest fibers right about here are going to just go about back to the barb and I only need a couple wraps here I'm not looking for a big bushy collar so I'll take my small hackle pliers and I'll grab the tip of that feather like that and then stroke these fibers backwards even that up just a little bit there. And then I can trim away the excess that I don't need. Gives me a little anchor to tie that in and I'll just secure that right in the head space here. Taking my hackle pliers Stroke these fibers back. And then begin to wrap that collar in. Again, as you see, I've got just three wraps. That's all I really need. Put in a couple wraps. We'll hold that rachis in place. I can then fold that back sweep everything back working from behind the eye of the hook 
I'll just make a small little head securing the rest of that rachis and then covering up anything. There we go. Then put in a five or six turn whip finish. Before I cut my thread, add a little tension. I can pop that rachis off. Now I can cut my thread off. And I can put a drop of head cement on each side or half a drop. Soak down in there. There you go. There's our black turkey. Pretty straightforward fly. Uh, it's kind of got standard wet fly pieces and parts. The wing is the, the one thing a lot of people haven't haven't uh, messed with before in terms of, you know, the just folding that around. Um, so that was the purpose of this video, just to show how to fold that turkey around. You can use other materials if you don't want to use turkey. You can use, you know, goose flight feathers, um, other things like that if you don't have the turkey. But, and even if you're doing turkey and or some other bird pheasant or whatever for a wing case, gluing it on the inside sometimes just helps to, to reinforce it as you fold it. Uh, over as a wing case or around as a wing such as this one. So I hope you enjoyed that. That's the black turkey. Thanks for joining me at the Vice today. I hope you learned at least a new pattern, if not a new technique, maybe a tip or trick here and there. If you have any questions about this fly or any of the techniques used in constructing this pattern, please leave them in the comment section down below. If you go to the trouble to ask a question, I'll go to the trouble to answer it. If you'd like to help Dressed Irons, please share this video with your friends and anybody you think that might enjoy this pattern. Until next time, remember, it's fly tying. If you're not having fun, then you're doing it wrong. Mm -hmm.